Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Reese Byrne. I'm the events marketing strategist here at Hire Easy. Uh, I use they, them pronouns. Um, just for anybody that has a question about what Hire Easy is, you've never heard of us. Um, Hire Easy is an ended and outbound recruiting platform providing teams with better talent quality, faster engagement, and stronger ATS sync. Um, so kind of like some ground rules. I'm usually the one holding the webinar. Um, if you have questions, please put them into the chat. Um, Adam and Fernanda have agreed that if there's a question that comes up during something that they're talking about, that I'll kind of just ask them right then, then and there so that y'all can get the answer and not have to ask it at the end. Um, if you're inappropriate in the chat, then I'll be the police that I am when it comes to Zoom and you know, handle the situation. Uh, so please be respectful and everything like that. Um, as well as with the question and answer section two, if you, I will not say your name, I'll just kind of keep it anonymous um, just to respect people and their questions. Um, but if you have a question that you want to ask Fernanda, Adam, myself, you can message us privately or use the Q&A function. Um, with that being said, I'm going to introduce Adam and Fernanda who are speakers. Oh, and um, Yes, that is my cat that was just sitting here. They, he, he just jumped down. So just don't, just ignore him if he comes to the screen as my little co-host. Um, but yes, so Adam and Fernanda, um, I'm going to have them introduce themselves. Um, Fernanda, would you like to go first and describe who you are and everything? Sure. My name is Fernanda Meyer. I do many, many things. I am, as one of my friends calls me, a Jill of all trades, but I do send quite a few outbound recruiting emails specifically in a startup and research capacity. So I'm actually currently hiring <laughs> for a uh, research intern position that does have a monthly pay. It is not, it has a stipend and getting people to respond to a research intern email that doesn't offer a ton of money has been interesting, but I've learned a lot of really great lessons. I have hired for everything from education to social work to education sales. And in these roles, what I find is that empathy is probably the catchiest catchphrase, if you will, of all of them, as opposed to just getting people to open the, the email. You, If you put yourself in that person's shoes and then write the email as such, you're more likely to get a response and an open. So. With that, I will hand it over to Adam and we can go from there. Uh, hey, everybody. My name is Adam Rosenfield. I'm out here in uh, a suburb of Austin, Texas. Uh, I have been in the recruitment HR industry for, what, 10 years now? Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, what do I, what do, I do on a daily basis? Uh, I send outbound recruiting emails. Uh, so I'm actually well known for some of my recruiting emails. Uh, some of them border on Looney. Uh, some of them border um, my my previous organization. Everybody laughed about the outbound email that I used to recruit them. So uh, this is an enjoyable subject. Uh, the thing about outbound emails is, uh, you know, yeah, recruiting can get monotonous, but sometimes they're supposed to be fun. So uh, yeah, I am excited to chat with all of you here, all 160 people here from all over the world, uh, give tips. And um, yes, the recording will be provided to attendees. So well, you're doing my job for me, Adam. <laughs> I'll do what I can. Thanks. Um, awesome. So a little background. So I actually know Adam and Fernanda very well. Um, Adam, I've known for what are we three years in our relationship now, kind of right. And then Fernanda, I actually met you what is it, close to a year when Black Speakers Collection started with my partner, Madison Butler. But um, when it came to both of these speakers, Adam, so my partner, Madison Butler, actually reached out to Adam about Fernanda. And Adam, can you tell the story of what your email said to Fernanda and how you're able to help her out with the position she was formerly in? Yeah, I mean, all my email said was Madison Butler, or Madison Butler told me to contact you. And uh, that's the thing about outbound emails. Um, you know, that, that's the thing about outbound emails is, uh, you just gotta, uh, I, I think people to beat around the bush too much and mm -hmm. yeah, Fernanda accepted the message and we went back and forth and I placed her in a role in what was it? February. Yes. I started in February interviewed in December, I believe. Yes. Oh yeah. That's right. Because she was, I think you were in the middle of some Caribbean Island or something like that. And they wouldn't send my equipment to me in Puerto Rico. So I had to come back to the US to get my equipment. 
<laughs> I know, I know. It was the whole thing. But that's not the point. The point is that I sent an outbound email. Uh, she accepted. It begun a long and fruitful relationship that landed us here. Yes, mm -hmm. we love to see it. Okay, so and I'm kind of that is actually a really great point to go back to the catchy line. It was catchy because I knew Madison. I related to it immediately, right? So seeing her name in the email automatically made me open it. So if it's something that somebody recognizes, whether it's in the subject line or it's in that first preview line, which is a thing that a lot of folks don't think about, then folks are more likely to open it. They're more likely to see what it's about because it's something that they can immediately relate to, whether it is so-and-so referred me, this person told me to reach out, I saw that you were looking at X, Y, Z, and then having that first preview line be a reflection of what the rest of the email is, is very helpful because the way people's email clients are set up, they may see that first preview line from the rest of the email, they may not. So it's helpful to just make sure that that too is catchy, not just a subject. I think uh, something interesting that Lisa pointed out is like love when recruiters do that and you do not know the person. Uh, <laughs> So something that I always try to do, especially on LinkedIn, um, I will not put the person's email in unless I know them like very, very personally. Um, so yeah, because I've, I've seen recruiters go, hey, do you know this person? And I'm like, honestly, I'm connected to them. I've never heard of them before. Uh, but my friend always laughs. Uh, I placed him at, at my previous company and uh, he told me his friend was looking. And so the email the email literally said his first name and last name and a question mark. And she was like, uh, she was like, that kind of shocked me. Uh, but, but I was, I was compelled to respond because of the personal nature of the message. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, that I, I, I will never put somebody's name in, uh, unless I am a friend, know them intimately, um, or, 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 or something similar to that. So. I love it. Okay. So the first thing I kind of want to go into is, um, and this is kind of open for either of y'all to jump in. What are some of the essential elements of an outbound recruiting email? I know that's like a very, <clears throat> excuse me, open-ended question, but would love to hear your thoughts about it and everything. And y'all, one of y'all can go first. doesn't matter. I won't pick and choose. I, I, can, I can go. Uh, go right for it, Adam. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, an outbound email has got a couple of things. So there's the subject line, uh, there is the introduction. There is the introduction. Uh, there is the description of whatever the service, job, whatever you are requesting. Uh, there is the closing, and then the the call to action. I think where a lot of people miss is a couple of things. They miss on the subject line because they they miss on the subject line um, because they don't read the person's profile. Uh, you know, when I'm when I'm on a social media profile, I will always look for any sort of connection point. So that's anything from first connection to uh, you know first connections to you know did we go to the same college? Did we work at the same uh, company in the past? There was a I, I placed somebody recently, and I noticed that we were both at this terrible agency at different times, and. I wrote something funny, like, were you as miserable as I was? And she said, like, yes, yes, I was. Um, and so, you know, various connection points. I, I placed an executive by referring to her volunteer organizations. So that subject line's got to be catchy and that's got to relate, not just saying, hey, hiring for a developer, um, though that has worked. Uh, then the intro. Uh, so many people, like, the way they screw it up is they don't, uh, they don't even spell the person's name right. Exactly. Uh, I, I love reaching out to people with uh, names like that are much harder to spell than Adam. So uh, because I know half the time I'm going to win because people don't spell their name right. Uh, and, you know, then there's a description. So it's making sure making sure it's appealing. Like what what are what are you selling? I always work with I work with companies and they're like, here's a job. And I'm like, What's the value proposition? Like, why why do I care about working at this company? Um, and as a recruiter, you've got to learn, or whoever is sending the LinkedIn mess or LinkedIn or any other message, you know, on on Hire Easy or whatever. Like, you've got to be that person who says, "What's the sell? What's the sell on the role? What's the sell on the company?" Um, so you know, I'll always put. Uh, I always ask the manager, "How can I sell you?" 
And one person did it really well earlier this year. She said, you know, I, have the past three people that I've worked for me have been promoted. And so I put that in, in the message. Uh, and then the closing. So the closing call to action. Um, sometimes I will put my Calendly in there because I don't like going back and forth on scheduling. And sometimes I'm say, I'll say, hey, are you open? Um, Fernando, what did I miss? I think you nailed it. And I think being succinct is probably the main thing. If your email is a full page and a half long, what are you hiding, <laughs> right? Like, what is it that you don't want me to read? Because if you open an email that just keeps going, chances are you're not gonna get to the bottom. So keeping it short and sweet is absolutely helpful because to your point, you don't wanna waste people's time. The rest is perfect. The other question I have too is, is um, well, somebody wants to ask for your opinion, Adam, why, what's the reason behind not using their name in a subject line? Like what is, is there like a drawback of not using somebody's name in a subject line or what do you think the best way? I, I mean, I know some people do. Um, you know, I don't think there's a drawback. I don't think there's a drawback either way. For me, it sometimes smells like uh, mass mass messaging. You know, it's like, Adam, we're hiring for this. Rather than, you know, I'll see, okay, you know, hey, you volunteered for Austin Pets Alive. Okay, what's your favorite dog breed? Uh, you, know, you know, so so that's why, that's why I tend to not use their own name in the subject line. So uh, rather than an, an interesting selling point. Got it. Okay. And then, so somebody also asked you, what are some of the best subject lines? It could be something that you've said, Adam, because I know that you're known for your emails and everything like that, or Fernanda, like what's some of the best subject lines that y'all have ever said or seen? Is there anyone that like stuck out to you the most at all? And you can go One first. that I, that worked for me and that I have used is your search stops here because whether or not they're searching, they want to know what you think they're searching for, right? So what do you mean my search? My search for what? Fame, riches, treasure. <laughs> that has, that got me to open more than one email. I think they probably all took a similar workshop like this um, and I have used it. And to Adam's point about you volunteered for XYZ Animal Shelter, that's absolutely something that you should use to relate back to whatever it is, whether it's industry-based, volunteer-based, using something that they already have familiarity with will also help them be, oh, what is, this is not spam email. Let me see what this is. So my, so the thing I, I always like when I receive uh, emails is that people take the time to read what I do. <laughs> um, and you, if you request me on LinkedIn, you'll see one of my, one of my titles is uh, parentally disappointed Dallas Cowboys fan. Uh, the great thing about that title is that title never, uh, that title, uh, as much as I want it to change, it never changes. So um, this, that's just based on the performance of the team. And so I love it when people actually put that in their subject line, or they talk about the recent game, uh, that just means that they've actually read my profile, uh, and, and have actually, uh, done, done due diligence. And, and I think Carmel, you, you mentioned the, what if they don't have anything on their profile? I mean, there, there's, there's something there, they'll have something, um, you know, whether it's their most recent company, whether it's something in their subject line, or whether it's something in their, in, in their main headline, um, you know, whether it's, they, they will always have something in their profile. And if, if they don't, if their profile is bare, then I just guess. Um, or, or what I do is, you know, if I'm looking on LinkedIn, maybe I'm look, I'll look on Twitter. And if I'm looking on Twitter, maybe I'll look on Facebook. You know, if I'm looking on Facebook, maybe I'll look at Reddit or GitHub. So mm -hmm. I will always try to find some sort of information and pull it out. And some people are like, where did you find that? And I'm like, listen, like I'm a professional stalker is what I do. So <laughs> I mean, it's fine though, because that's the way that you find talent and everything. Yeah. Um, okay. This question kind of goes to the second like subject I want to talk about. So the next thing I would really want to talk about is um, what are some experimental techniques to help you stand out to talent? Fernanda, I would love to start with you and get your opinions and tips and tricks about that. Well, one of the things that I think I saw earlier in the chat when we first logged on before we officially got started was how, um, so, and somebody just brought it up again about asking about emojis. I think that is very industry specific, 
because emojis indicate a familiarity and emojis are lighthearted. Emojis are, you know, they are catchy, but a lot of spam emails from just bulk mailings have emojis in them because they bypass a lot of email filters. So if it is a lighthearted or you know, fun, upbeat thing. If there is a sense of familiarity with that person, emojis can be used, but I wouldn't recommend that as a first contact for something that would be, say, a research position or something in a highly professional field, medical, uh, legal, engineering, et cetera, because that would probably look a little bit off. But if there is some sense of familiarity and if there is a lighthearted aspect to it, if it is volunteering at an animal shelter and you put a dog emoji in the email subject line or in the email itself, I think that's totally appropriate. I wouldn't necessarily do that as a first contact cold in an industry that has nothing to do with anything lighthearted or fun. Um, and then what was the other question you asked? That was a two-parter, Reese. You're good. Uh, so, so kind of like the essential elements of an, uh, of like how to reach out and stand out to your talent. Somebody is also asking too, um, would you send the doc job description in the first contact of an email or not? No. Full JD? No. No, I would, no. I mean, think that's why it's, it's, I don't know how many of you are recruiters on this, but that's why it's so key to just meet with your hiring managers and give like a paragraph, you know, a little splurge on it. It's like, okay, Hey, I'm hiring. For a recruiter, great. So is everybody else. Like, what's the difference with this one? Okay, well, you know, we're a you know AI company working with X, or you know, we're a legal tech company that's backed by Mark Cuban, and you know, we've helped I don't know two million small business owners to date, and we're growing X or something like that. So yeah, the people who send the like pair like the JD, I'm like, why? Like, I, I don't I don't need to see uh duties and responsibilities i want to know what the upside is because that, that's usually what that, that's a that's a lazy uh that's a, that's a that's a lazy email or, yeah that's that's a, that's a lazy email and usually like the job descriptions are written super poorly too it's like you know this role uh you know call and message candidates or you know something like that so i'm sure fernanda you've been the recipient of some really boring reach outs Indeed. And somebody else asked about personalizing mass emails. I've been on the receiving end of those mass emails and sent them. And you can personalize to an extent because some of the email clients will allow you to use that first name and the formula for the subject line. So that is a form of personalization. But again, it really depends on the type of role. If, the, if you're hiring for 100 roles and you're sending the email out to 500 people, Adam, this is Fernanda from such and such. I'd love to network with you as somebody just put in the chat, I think would work because you can use that in automation. Um, but beyond that, it's it would be nearly impossible to personalize that many emails unless you don't sleep, um, <laughs> which I don't recommend. And researching 500 people for a mass hire is also not quite possible on most people's schedules. So. Well, I, I think mass hold on. I think mass hire is different than than regular or not mass hire is different than targeted. Cause that's that's my thing is I try not to like for any role, like I'm trying not to reach out to a thousand a thousand mm -hmm. people. You know, I'm trying to figure out, okay, who is the best person for the role? I'm gonna make my roll up list. I'm gonna reach out, I'm gonna reach out to those people. So, you know, I, I know there are people who are mass hires, but that's spray and pray and Spray and pray doesn't necessarily give you the give you the best candidates. So it's on you to figure out who are my top candidates, whittle down, and then send those personalized emails. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Somebody else just asked: Do you use mass merge for mass personalization e or mail merge for mass personalization emails? Yes, you could for automation. So again, it just really depends on the type of role. Are you mass hiring, or are you doing as Adam said, preferring to look for quality over quantity i think i think it's interesting um somebody mentioned don't most recruiters do mass hire or at least volume hire and like i think the answer is it depends so uh fernando i mean curious curious your your experience but uh, i mean yeah i think it depends on the industry mass hire for me has been primarily focused around college students 
So there is a project that needs 150 folks to show up at you know, game day on Saturday for XYZ, or we are going to be receiving a whole bunch of service members you know, to be honored at. And so we need volunteers to greet them, to get them through the parking lot, and then to walk them into the stadium, et cetera. So, I mean, that is a mass hiring event, even though they're really only getting a couple of <laughs> drink and snack tickets as payment. But the allure of being involved with something like that, of potentially being on TV is what I put in those emails. Like, hey, wait, how on, would sorry. you like the opportunity to do X and then send that out to a gajillion people? Wait, I, I want to interrupt you because I want to ask you a question because I think this is interesting, hiring volunteers versus hiring uh, others. Uh, mm -hmm. I am curious. Yeah, I, like I want to. I want to hear your process for hiring volunteers. You know, you mentioned getting them on TV, but like, how do you go about? You know, what are you using? You know, how are you organizing? And how? Because I think th this is interesting for some people who are doing mass hires of like people at fifteen dollars an hour. So like, how are you going about going like hiring these volunteers? What are you know? What are you sending out bound wise? And then what's kind of your process to get them at the finish line? So I will use the most recent one, which was literally hiring people to come and greet service members uh, to come into an LSU game and talked about the role. And we actually had a clip that we inserted into the email from a similar event that was done previously. And the email opening um, was, do you like, and it was tigers, et cetera. So it was a three different animal. Uh, do you roll tide? Do you go tigers? Or do you, what was the third one? I don't even remember. It was another armadillo or sports reference that I'm just not familiar with in college football, apologies. And in the body of the email was a clip of what the volunteers were expected to do from the previous year that it had been done. And then and right below the clip was, and if that still doesn't get you, how does two drink tickets and two snacks sound? If you're still reading, click here because we'd love to have you on our volunteer day for you know service members live. And we got so many responses, it was ridiculous. We got way more than we needed, which is excellent. And then those people went into the database for the following year. So we knew that that worked only because the Booster Club gave us a list of emails from people who had previously expressed interest. It's uh, when you sign up for the tickets, it asks if you would like to be considered to be volunteer in future events. And then volunteers also receive discounts on future game tickets, et cetera, et cetera. So it, the WIFM was strong, the what's in it for me. So the call to action was very easy for them. We included a link to register to become a volunteer as well. So it was a very low lift for them. And we had proof of concept from previous events. So it's much easier. I've also done volunteering, um, recruiting events for not so fun things. And I find that appealing to people's sense of compassion for those events helps because nobody wants to sit in the hot sun for a cancer walk, right? Because they're not walking, they're just literally handing people water as they go by or they're helping people register. And so calling on their sensibility for being involved in that area for the in the first place is more effective because it's usually people who have lost a family member or have a family member who's currently battling that illness and appealing to that is very helpful in the volunteering and then also recruiting for people who do get paid at these events is a thing so they're not getting paid 15 dollars. it might be closer to 12 and it's for one weekend or it's for one day and so you send out five thousand emails <laughs> And you might get only 100 people who are even available. So I really think that in volunteering, it's similar to the asks for paid positions or low paid positions even, but appealing to what they like, what they know, what they're familiar with. And then if you have imagery, if you have any sort of something they can look at to give them an idea of what it is, that is always helpful. I think for those of you on on this webinar, you know, I think Fernanda pro, pro provided a blueprint too. As we have these hiring events that transition from uh, virtual to in person, you know, if you're looking to hook people, if I, if you're like, hey, I'm doing a mass hire in you know Dallas or uh, Provincetown, Rhode Island, uh, sending these types of emails, and you know, if you go back and and listen, if you listen to the recording. And listen to what Fernanda said, recruiting volunteers. 
uh, that same thing can be applied to get people to come out to your career events too. Um, another two part question that I have too is so when it comes to contacting somebody, somebody asks, um, should you include a link to the full job description or not? Um, I, I tend to do that. Um, I have not before. Um, but like I, I do, if like our, if the JD is clean, if the link is clean, like there are some people who don't have an ATS and like the job is on their the website and it just like doesn't look good. Um, you know, I, uh, but I will always, I will always link it. Fernando, do you do the same thing as well? Or do you wait to the second email? It depends. Okay. It, for me, it depends. The short answer is yes. The longer answer is if it takes them to an online application that doesn't have any sort of a referral. So how would the person, you know, if they didn't know about this job until I told them about it. And if I am specifically in charge of hiring for this role and I get paid to place, I would want the company to know that they came from me, right? So in that particular case, yes, you want them to see the job description. You want them to at least be able to look up the company, et cetera. But if there is no way for the respondent to indicate that they have talked to you, emailed with you, anything, I think twice about it. Um, and I will also make sure that I put, hey, tell so-and-so that Fernanda sent you. So you do want to be able to make sure that that recognition is there, but you know, for the most part, yeah, you want them to see the job description for sure. You want them to know what they're walking into and a link is the easiest way to do that. But to Adam's point, making sure it's clean, that it looks good and that it can redirect back to you. Awesome, okay. And I keep on getting this question, so I'm gonna just ask it again. Um, so a lot of people keep on asking, um, like, what's like another good subject line to use? Fernanda, you said your search stops here, which you've liked. Um, other folks are asking, like, what are some other ones that are like? I saw good somebody to asking use about hospice. I believe yes. For a more serious position yes. like a hospice social worker, I think I can be pretty catchy in the email, but I struggle with the subject line. What are some ones that you have used so it doesn't sound spammy? I think it's important to ask where you're getting their name and information. Like, did you find them on LinkedIn? Do they have the open to work button on their profile? And if so, if it's a serious position, your heart is open and we can use your help. Or you have done X, Y, Z so well, hospice, social worker. We'd love to put that to work for us and then go into it from there. But your search stops here absolutely is an easy, easy win. Um, using a first name, as we talked about, can help, especially if there's some sort of familiarity there, but subject matter is important and I think can cap capture people as well, because if somebody were to put an engineering subject line in an email to me, I would think that they'd emailed the wrong person because I have nothing to do with engineering. So you just want to make sure that the subject line aligns with whatever you're hiring for, because that will also capture their attention. Awesome. Also, my internet is going like wonky right now. So I'm turning off my camera in case, you know, where it, where it decides to not be fun. Um, okay, cool. So I'm sorry, y'all. I'm going through all of these. Somebody also asks, do you send a link to a short form of five questions, which will help you filter screen better and faster when it comes to candidates that you send emails to? Repeat that question again. Do you send a link to a short form of five questions, which will help you filter screen better and faster? Not, not really. I mean, I, you know, I do targeted reach outs. And so 98% of the time, like I know this person is qualified. Um, just, you know, comp might be the one thing that, that leads them or, uh, but like on the surface, I, I know they're, ge they're generally qualified. So, uh, like the thing is, is, is your outbound recruiting. And my goal is not to, not to make sure that they're doing even more work. Cause like I reached out to them. And so I want them to respond to me. I don't want to give them any more hurdles. And do you have any insight on that too, especially when it comes to the recruiting of, uh, that you've done within, you know, college students and anything like that? 
Yes and no. <laughs> what is the first? I'm trying to pull that out of the other. <laughs> what was the first part of that? So it says, do you send a short? So it's in the question and answer. It's the last one. It says, do you send For a filtering? Yes. So is that in, under the assumption that you haven't filtered them before you send the email, like in mass hiring? Because I think that that's where this would be applicable. So if it's targeted, like Adam said, I wouldn't do that only because I've already done it. And if it's a mass email, sure. If you're hiring a ton of people, I think you do want to know if they can lift a box up to 25 pounds. You do want to know if they have transportation that day, et cetera. So yes. Filtering questions, I think, would work in a mass hire event, but in targeted outreach, I wouldn't necessarily include those unless the company specifically asks you to, but that's not something I would lead with, no. Gotcha. Okay. Um, next question is, God, there's y'all are killing me with all these questions. This is great, though. Um, uh, you know, I, I think Josh, Josh put something, you know, Josh put something uh, interesting in here, you know, he used to send a form early to, and it worked only worked with entry and mid level, but never worked for senior level because and it's true, like, you know, it's the same with when you're hiring like entry level designers, and, and you talk about, you know, projects, uh, you, you want to see they have the technical aptitude, obviously, you should pay them for their time especially if it goes over like an hour, but uh, they're, you know, senior level candidates know they're good. They've been in the game. Uh, you know, the, the goal, the goal, my, my goal with recruiting all the time is like, um, how, how much can I cut through the BS and how much can I ensure that like, I am not wasting, I, I am not wasting their time. Right. So, uh, and I know Nancy, you said like the question could pertain whether they're open to reload, but like when you're reaching out, you can see that, like you can see people put put their preferences, um, but also, you know, sometimes people put it. Um, my my experience sometimes has been is my my whole goal it, when I'm reaching out is get to that first conversation. So, mm -hmm. uh, it's I don't want any I don't want any barriers. I just want them to set up a time. I want them to book on my Calendly, and then we'll take it from there. Either I sell them on the job, or I don't, and maybe they give me a referral, so. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really good way to answer the salary question. Yep. Um, is that where that came from, compensation? Uh, that's, I mean, kind of, I think that's what the person was insinuating at first, and then somebody asked about salary expectations, which mm -hmm. I think is a big question to be asked too, as well. Mm -hmm. And so what it is, so for the salary expectations, when is it discussed so as not to waste applicants' time and yours? Applicants sometimes ask it directly before agreeing to a call. So when's the ideal time to put in a salary for a position that you're hiring for in an email? And that's open-ended. So Fernanda or Adam, one of y'all can go first. Yeah, so in my, in I'll use my experience with Adam. Adam told me over the phone, he did not talk to me in an email about the salary. It was Madison knows me. This is, you know, I have a couple of positions you may be interested in, you know, let's set up a time. And then in the phone call, that's when we discussed job duties. That's when we discussed salary. That's when we discussed the company, et cetera, et cetera. So that approach, I think to Adam's point to get them on the phone is when you would want to when they're on the phone, not in your initial email, unless it is something that is a mass hire for $15 an hour for 20 hours of work over two days of time. And that is just very cut and dry. Is this a thing that you want to do? Done. But for targeted hire, no, not necessarily. You don't want to tell them that in the intro. Well, and I think, Fernanda, for the position that you and I were talking about, too, and, and I think when we talk, especially when it talks about tween, like I call it tweener sales, um, <laughs> you know, I find that maybe not putting it in uh, and and kind of getting them to talk to you because you know that role in particular was like, hey, this is a salary, but there's this bonus and this bonus and this bonus. And mm -hmm. it's like, if we wrote it all out, you'd be like, okay, this is too much writing. I don't care. So, <laughs> right. um, but like sometimes, sometimes you know that uh, I I will I will I won't put it in the initial one, but if they ask, yeah, I, I'll say, hey here's the range, but you know, there's a lot more than that. And like, let's, let's talk. 
So um, like what, what I find is like people will say, okay, you know, hey, I'm making this, um, but you know, they have this, 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 and this. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I, I, I want to move forward. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, Richard, Richard is right. Um, Richard, this Richard Sherman, I don't know if it's the uh, former uh, Seahawks cornerback or just a Which guy. Which is exactly who came to mind when I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> if it is, <laughs> here, hi. Hi. Yeah, yeah Richard, uh, you're great on Amazon Prime. But uh, um, no, I mean, you know, I, I uh, you know, I'll, I'll have them ask me uh, because that's the thing is, there's a salary, but there's, but other people may have different preferences. You know, maybe if you're, if you, if finances aren't something of an issue to you, you know, maybe you're talking about, um, you, you know, maybe equity is important, or maybe you want to know that, you know, they cover a hundred percent of healthcare or something like that. Mm -hmm. so, um, that sort of thing. And I just want to answer, uh, somebody went off topic, but what schedule do you use? Um, I use Calendly. So, and then I use the calendar connector to schedule my personal email and my work email. And so that way candidates like see like a true accurate, uh, like my accurate block of time. So other people use others. Like I think Microsoft has like their own type of scheduler, but I use Calendly. It's just easy. It's a link. Um, yeah. And they have a free option for those of you who yeah. don't have budget for that. Any, anything, I, yeah, anything I use, I try to use free. So except for LinkedIn premium, that's not free. So which, it, which answered one of the questions I was about to, should recruiters pay for LinkedIn premium? Yes. Or so. get your, get your uh, company to pay for, or LinkedIn. get the company to yes. Or this is a plug for hire easy. Hello. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Be Reese. We do sales and everything like that. So I literally lobbed it up there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to receive the catch and plug higher easy because obviously we're there higher easy. Um, okay. There's a lot of questions in, so I'm kind of like trying to catch so up many. With them, which is, this is honestly great. Um, so somebody asked, how do you properly filter out someone's job? Type? Oh, I cannot answer that question, but Kunwar can answer that question is on the back end. When it comes to hire easy, I'm sorry I can't answer that question for you live. I apologize. Don't tell my boss. Wow. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, Reese, like these people in the comments are selling hire easy better than you are. Jeez. Ah, yeah. uh, this is now awkward and now everybody else is recording. <laughs> so, I'm gonna excuse myself. No, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so some other questions too is um this is open ended. Do you think an engaging activity on any of the social platforms, which involves your target audience of your target candidate before an email outreach will get you a better outcome. That was a lot for me to say. Or like a scavenger hunt? I I guess. I guess it's because do you think of do you think an engaging activity of any yeah like that maybe a scavenger hunt or some type of activity? I'm just trying to I'm just trying to understand having a recruit perform free labor to get an interview with you would work maybe i'm interpreting it completely incorrectly yeah the only honestly the only kind of work i've ever done like uh, to, to make candidates do something is for a content for a content role right. i specifically right example. no well i mean not even that i specifically spelled things wrong on the job description and i you know at the at the bottom of the job description i wrote a disclaimer and you know if you're like hey if you can tell me what's wrong and I had people apply and I was like, okay, like they're hundred percent interested and they did the work. Great. Like, that's the only thing. Um, I really try to not, I, I always tell people in the hiring process, I'm like, please do not do pro make them do projects. Cause like it adds a week, two weeks. Then people ask about pay mm -hmm. and it's, it gets messy. Uh, and uh, yeah. And also for things like asking for writing samples, I've seen some say, oh, it has to be original. It has to be 375 words. Oh, you're asking me to write your SEO right now. No, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. Absolutely not. So if you are asking for them to send a sample of any sort, then it should be something that's already in existence. You shouldn't be asking them to write original material because that comes off again as you asking them for free labor. There was um, a sad, I won't even say the name of the company because I can't, but 
they wanted applicants to create an entire social platform campaign, right? They wanted to them to submit social calendars. I, I, I'm not going to help you with this. Yeah. Sending a social calendar, you are asking them to do the job that you want them to do for free. That's wild. So I would shy away from that. And if you do ask for a sample of anything, please specify that it is something that they can have used before. Oh, so yeah, I don't even I don't even ask them first round. Like I I will only ask samples if they're in the interview process and, and it's specifically requested. I know some people do, uh, and they ask them for their social security number. Yeah, I don't know if you ever. Uh, it's like the recruiting hell on uh, the subreddit on uh, or the recruiting hell subreddit. Like uh, I see all types of recruiters asking people for things. And I'm like, what? Like why? It's so wild. Oh, man. Okay. Another question is, uh, what if you post a job on ZipRecruiter? Does it make sense to add screening questions along with posting? If yes, how many? I mean, if you're going to add screening questions, you know, make them relevant. So if it's, mm -hmm. you know, if it's, hey, this job is in Boston. Okay. Do you live, you know, in, Bo like, do you live in Boston or plan to relocate? Okay, like that's a screening question. Um, you know, do you have, I don't know, three plus years of experience in X? Like, I, I mean, I think some screening questions are relevant, especially when it's, when if you're hiring for like a role, and I know we're all about the remote world, but some jobs have to be in person. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, if they're in person or if they require a specific specialization. Um, you know, I don't think you need screening questions for an account executive, for example. Okay, next question. It is a very long question. Um, when in early career recruitment, we don't have to source. We can just tie up the universities and let them do everything for you. What is your take on taking this approach instead of outbound recruitment for early careers? I mean, that's dumb. Like, sorry, I don't mean to, I don't mean to say it bluntly, but like, I always like to have control of my process, you know, like I, I know at the company I'm at, like, you know, yeah, I have a sourcing partner, but he recruits like specifically for us um, and like knows our brand. And if you do, if you have university, the university, uh, you know, help you with that. I mean, you're, you may not get your brand across, like I'd rather control it you know, using Handshake or one of those that gives me direct access to these kids because I'd rather sell my brand to these kids or, you know, because these are future interns, these are future full-time folks. Um, I didn't mean to say it was dumb, but like, you know, the thing is, is if you're a company trying to build your brand, like don't let somebody else control it for you. Gladly accept the space on campus if you're going to do an in-person or gladly accept the email list of all the names and, you know, whatever information you can get from them. But handing it over is not what anybody should do. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Um, Listen, if anybody wants to hire me to, like, help manage their university recruiting process, like, sure, like, feel free. I'm available. Um yeah, this I, is I your mean, plug. <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, listen, I'm I'm happy I'm happy to help you. Uh, I just think you know you shouldn't. You know the university knows how to sell. You know it was like I I, I bring this up. I mean I'm I'm an active member uh, of my Austin uh, the Austin club of my uh, of my university, the University of North Texas, and uh, uh, you know I remember we uh, earlier in the spring we had like a big prospective students night at a hotel in Round Rock. And like the alumni association was right next to uh, a particular program that like they were promoting, I don't know, like the college of, I don't know if it was arts and sciences or what, but like the person wasn't an alum and she could sell the program, but she couldn't sell the university. And so mm -hmm. I kind of stepped in and I, and I stole some of her people. And I said, listen, like, I see you're on the fence. I know you're, you know, trying to decide between X, Y, and, you know, uh, other universe, other uh, universities in Texas and ours, like, this is why you should do that. And so it's the same thing if you're, if, if you have, if you're doing your, uh, um, 
if, if you, it, it's the same thing for you if you have, if, if you give your, uh, you know, recruiting over to the university, like the university won't sell you as good as you're going to sell yourself. So, yeah. Um, okay. So another question is, I honestly think we got, uh, we hit this question, but we'll just ask it again for folks that might've joined later. Um, will you also explain your process for target hiring as well? And whoever can go first, it does not matter. I go into target and I see who I can hire. <laughs> but what section of target is the most no I'm just kidding. housewares everybody knows housewares i'm kidding it's Dude, true. I, I get yeah i get lost there i don't know oh no you have to go and like with the exact amount of cash in your hand no cards no no plastic it is it is a Same death way. yep death march to walk into target with a credit card um target you due diligence and that's come up a couple of times doing due diligence and actually researching the person or persons that you are interested in reaching out to for the role um we all know the i lied on my resume about excel people there are also the i lied about everything on my entire linkedin profile people and so what I find is that people are really good at making a LinkedIn profile look one way, but the rest of their maybe social media, things that they've posted. If somebody says I have bylines in X, Y, and Z, and they list a bunch of magazines, it's quite easy to Google their name with that magazine and see if anything pops up. So that due diligence for especially targeted hires is so, 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 so important. Um, and I mean, really from there, getting them to, as Adam said, click on the Calendly or as Reese said, use their hire easy software uh, <laughs> to schedule, <laughs> schedule a meeting, but the due diligence is huge. And then personalizing the email so that they don't just open it, but they actually get to the bottom of it and click on that link to set up a calendar time. You know, it's hiring. I think there's a lot of people who think that there's like either either some science or it's like super easy, but you you have to have some sort of effort, you know, and, and if you don't make any effort, if you don't take a look at the person's profile, like if you don't, because the key is it's that first, especially when you're outbound, you know, you've got to keep the candidates interest the entire process. So mm -hmm. it all boils down to you know, yes, there's that email, but also the communication through through the entire process. So um, that I think that you know, there, there's a reason that, that there's a reason you know Reese is selling a product called Hire Easy and not Hire Hard. So uh, you know, it's supposed to it's supposed to make you're supposed to find ways to make it easier for you. And somebody write that down. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> messaging Gunnar. Gunnar, did you get that? <laughs> you, you know, when, when you when you target when you target, it's it's all about like, okay, if I'm if I'm hiring a product marketing manager, you know, what am I looking for? Okay, maybe I'm looking for somebody who has product manager experience. I'm looking for associate product manager, product market product marketing strategist, senior product marketing manager, and so. Um, or things just related to the product or even marketing program manager. And I'm making my targeted list off of that. And then if I want industry specific, you know, if I'm looking for a cybersecurity company, I'm trying to fit, I'm asking the marketing people. So like, I just recently completed a search and I said, you know, I, for a product marketing manager. And I said, who do you want to hire from? And she said, I want the InfoSec community. And these are 20 target companies. And so that made my job 10 times easier. And so make your job easier by say by saying like, hey, who do you want to target? Where do you want to target? Um, you know, as a recruiter, fi you know, fire back at your hiring manager because you want to give them the best candidate possible, and using as much of of their re uh, you know, and using as much of their knowledge, if that makes sense to anybody. It does. Um, another question that we kind of got at the beginning and I was, I missed on accident. Somebody asked, do you have any advice related to international recruiting where you may not have as many commonalities to be able to re relate to them, like previous employers, school contracts? Is there any advice that you have for folks that are, um, trying to get folks international and reach out to them? I mean, I, I hundred percent think that there, that there are ways you can relate. Uh, I had to do some Australian and UK recruiting. I'm a big sports fan. And so 
But, you know, I, I mean, listen, I don't know Jack about the Queen or the Royal Family, but like what I do know is like, you know, English Premier League, I know Australian football. Um, my teams had, you know, Australians on them. And so, you know, my whole thing was I, try, I, I tried the sports route. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, you know, once again, as, as a recruiter for yourself too, make yourself Mar you know, make yourself marketable in some way. So that cat, the Cowboys line, what I find is that we are universally hated both in the United States and abroad. And so, uh, you know, or I, like I had to recruit Slovenian designers and I happen to be a Dallas Mavericks fan and who happens to be from Slovenia? Well, like the best player in the NBA right now. And so I find that Slovenia is a very small country of 2 million people uh, and, and every, everybody know everybody knows this guy, uh, uh, his name, his name's Luca. And, uh, you know, that was the easiest way. I didn't have any, co any commonalities or anything, but, you know, they're still humans, right? Uh, you know, sure. They may not have gone to your university or anything like that, but, you know, they, I mean, you can, you, you know, you can enjoy music the same in the U S that you do in Europe. Or, you know, you can enjoy sports, you can enjoy food, or, you know, maybe, you know, if, if, if Reese is recruiting somebody in Curacao, maybe, maybe, maybe they're like, hey, um, I just went to Curacao, this is my favorite spot, what's yours? So, you know, I, I think, you know, just because, just because you're recruiting internationally or another country, it doesn't mean that there's no, no commonalities, because we're all still humans, right? Yeah, I love that. Okay. So we have about like five minutes left. But go ahead. I want to I yeah. want to circle back to in the Q and A the person who asked about social media, which I thought was maybe do a scavenger hunt. It was not a scavenger hunt. They clarified, and have asked like comment on their posts or like their posts on social media. I think that could be a yes or a no, um, and I'm I will lean a little bit to no only because. I am not my social media as I am my employer or employee, right? Um, my profile does not explicitly state it, but these are my opinions. And I wouldn't necessarily want a hiring person or recruiter to interact with my personal posts in the hopes of helping me find a role, unless it's a post that says, oh, you know, I would like to work at X, Y, and Z. And if you represent X, Y, and Z, sure, absolutely respond to that post and say, well, I can help you with that, right? Because that's going to pique my interest. I'm going to go, oh, okay, and you are. So general rule, no, but specific cases like that, sure. Engaging with their online content. LinkedIn is technically a social platform. So engaging with their profile in that way, absolutely. But going on Twitter and replying to, you know, oh, I hated Thor, God of Love and Thunder, doesn't really, <laughs> like that doesn't, that doesn't give you any value. That's not a value add to me. Right, okay. I think we have time for like two more questions. So they're kind of related into the same one. Uh, the first one is, is how long are your initial outreach emails? Aren't most people using their phones to answer emails? Uh, are we limited? Aren't we limited? Is what the first question is. Uh, I mean, my outreach emails. I, I always look at the character count, and so like on LinkedIn, I find them um, probably anywhere from like five hundred to like eight hundred characters. Uh, especially if we have like big things in common, um, and then sometimes with email i mean it's it's probably similar uh twitter i try to keep it like one to two sentences and uh shanda i think that's a great question i don't connect with them until they respond to my message so because then that's like look i'm a human rather than just like a random person so um i mean i do do just random connects of people i just like find really interesting and want to meet but uh, if I'm reaching out, I, I usually wait. Um, or if they're like, hey, I decline, I'm gonna say, great, like let's connect anyway, um, just for the future. And like they, they'll usually accept it. So, but yeah, I mean, anywhere 500 to 800 characters. And what was the second part of your question? Um, the other one is, is do you rely on email follow-up with on a phone call or mainly on connecting through email? 
has fun recruit recruiting fallen by the wayside? Absolutely not. I, I love to text. Um, I find, um, I, and I always, the first call, I will always ask candidates like, hey, uh, do you, are, are you okay with text um, you know, throughout the recruiting process? Because I find A, causes them to respond faster. It's more personal. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it just, it just gets the job done quicker. And it personalizes the process. You feel more like a partner than a recruiter. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. So I think we have time for one more. Um, oh, this is another plug for hiring. It's going to be great. So somebody asked, and it's kind of like the last question I was going to ask you both. What are your preferred HTS systems? Um, if it's like somebody said, if it feels off topic, disregard it. But I think that's like a great question to ask because not everybody uses an ATS system when it comes to reaching out. So Fernando, yeah, or Adam, you, what you, you know what you should. Um, so my my ATS systems, um, I like to combine them. So you know, I do like Greenhouse. I do like Lever, um, Gem, Hire Easy. Uh, you know, I do, I do like to I do like to send outbound and and, and see my statistics. So. Um, please don't use Excel. I know a lot of people are using Excel for an ATS, like invest money in an ATS. Cause like, it's also good just as a relationship builder. Um, you know, you can track them. It's, it's so much harder on Excel doing it manually. So maybe I, I might be voted down by others, but, uh, yeah, that's what I believe. Yeah. Nothing yeah. concurrence for me. No, I concur. Um, because I do use Excel and it sucks. <laughs> Allow me to be the, the don't do it. I, I already go through it uh, person in this. Awesome. Okay. So we have one minute left, but I'll kind of just wrap it up there. Um, thank you both for being here. Thank you to our, I think the, the top number that we got to is like 185 folks. Um, if, yeah. If anybody wants to connect uh, I know um, Fernanda and I, our, our LinkedIn's will be in the chat for anybody yep. to connect. Um, please don't uh, connect and offer us franchise opportunities. So. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I mean, if anybody wants any advice, any help, uh, you know, don't also, don't also don't ask me for fantasy picks because I'm just as bad as you are. Trash. So, Trash. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm glad I'm glad we got to do this and and uh, yeah, really open to connect with anybody. So, yeah, for sure. And we'll have one more of these webinars. It'll be a different topic, but um, I think in or a month or in October, November before the holidays and everything like that. Um, but want to say thank you to everybody, everybody that's been on here. This will be sent to you via recording through the email. So look out for it. But um, Fernanda and Adam, thank you so much. It's always good to hang out with y'all, and I hope everybody has a great day.